Hey guys, Pete here from Leisure Time with another episode of What's Wrong With My Hot Tub. Today we're going to be looking at an Artesian South Seas 748L hot tub. And the customer is saying that the breaker's tripping when pump number two comes off. So we're going to check that out, confirm that's what's happening, and then I'll show you what to do to fix it. So I want to show you how to look at the serial number and your model number. There's two places on the hot tub you can check that out. One of them is right down here on the toe kick. There's a little plate, it gives you the serial number and it should say the model number on there as well. But I'll pull the panel off and show you the other place where you can find it. First, let's take a look at the breaker tripping. Come on over here. Turn the tub on. The hot tub's going to do its startup sequence. And then once ready to go, it'll say prime, PR. Um, now if you just leave the hot tub like this for about five minutes, it's going to automatically turn on pump one and start priming, start heating. Um, we can jump ahead on that just by hitting jets one. Looks like pump one turns on okay, low speed. Pump two, looks good. Now we can turn on pump two. It's sitting there humming. And then it shuts off. So with the jet pump humming, two things might happen. Either um, it's gonna pull too many amperage from the breaker and it will trip the breaker, or it'll hum and it gets really warm and then it'll stop humming and then it thermals out and shuts off before it trips the breaker. But we've been having issues with it tripping the breaker, so we're gonna go ahead and shut it down, pull the panel off, get it drained, and replace the pump. Okay, so I got my water draining here in the tub, got my submersible pump running through an inch and a half line out into the field. Um, that'll drain it a lot faster than what these things usually take through the three quarter inch garden hose drain fitting. Uh, I wanted to show you a little tip trick that you can use when removing the cover panel to get into the equipment area. So I'm pulling off the panel, they have the two screws so they put one here and one here. And then you have the three screws on the trim piece up the side. What I like to do is because that panel can be hard to get back to the same place as it was before, all level and everything. Pull off one screw from the trim here. And I'm going to stick it in right underneath the panel right here. And do the same thing on the other side. Pull off the screw, stick it in right underneath the panel. And I'll go ahead and pull the rest of the screws off my trim. Now I'm going to pull the two screws off the bottom of the panel here. keeps the panel from dropping right down on my fingers. Pressing my fingers. Now you lift up, pull out, comes right off. And when it's time to go back on again, those screws are set there to help you put it on the same way it came off. 
you don't end up fighting the panel. Now once we're inside the equipment area, I told you there's another spot we can look at for your serial number and model designation. It's on this tag right here. On this year of artesian hot tubs, they were using a Balboa control pack system. All the two top screws off. Open it up. And on a circuit board, we have three plugs for the wires. Pump number one is a two-speed pump, so it has the four wires on there. You got pump number two, it's just a single-speed pump, so it has the three wires. And then you got your ozone plug-in over here. Now looking at the system, you can see that this pump over here is plumbed directly into the heater manifold that runs across there. That's going to be our circulating pump for the heat, pump number one. And over here, you have pump number two with the two plumbing lines that just come out from the tub through the pump back into the tub again. So that's going to be our bad pump that we'll want to replace. First thing I'll do is remove these two screws over here that sort of clamp the wires into the control box. I'm going to take the wire from the pump, just follow it back, make sure I'm grabbing the right one. Right up into our pump number two. Disconnect that. Back here inside, what they did from the factory is they zip tied and screwed down the pump wire. And they zip tied it back there as well. I'm just going to cut the zip ties to get them out of the way, make it easier to remove the pump. Okay, now that we got the hot tub drained, I'm just gonna set up here to remove the pump. just to make it easier and more convenient to remove the pump. Going to remove the ground bonding wire from the pump. Now we're going to remove the two inch unions on the pump, the inlet and the outlet. And I'm going to do that using this filter wrench. This is an oil filter wrench for a car. But it does a good job at grabbing a hold of those union nuts, sort of breaking them loose. Put 
just off the top one. Reach in there. Once you get it broken loose with the wrench. And you can use your hand to remove it the rest of the way. Anytime you remove these unions, sometimes the o-ring can fall off. You just want to make a mental note about always check that before you put it back on. Grab the o-ring, keep it in a place where you can see it, put it back on again before you put everything back together. Now the next part is something that has always kind of bugged me about the way that Fusion does this. So we have the pump bolted to this plate, and then they screw the plate down with th three screws in the front. A couple more screws back there, two, maybe three back there. This might take a bit of a pain to get to. But the way I do it is I've got this. 90 degree elbow flexible elbow extension get back there into those hard to reach places so I'll put my extension into here take my screwdriver bit put it in the extension And then onto my screw gun. And now, this might be a little hard to film, but now I can get back there and reach those ones that are in the very back. screws in the back off. Go ahead and pull the three screws in the front. Now we have access to pull the pump off. Next step is to remove the pump from the plate. Get those four bolts off the front and the back. Typically I would use a socket or a nut driver to remove those. However, with the way how close it is to the pump, there's not really enough room to do that. I'm just going to use a little open end ratchet wrench. This is a half inch. pump is humming, there's a couple of different problems that could be wrong with the pump. One of them is that the pump is seized up, meaning there's been a water leak right where the shaft seal is. And the shaft goes from the, the wet end from the impeller over into the armature. And that starts leaking and then leaks into the motor itself. Gets the bearings all wet and rusty. 
and then it just seizes up. Another issue is that the, the windings on the inside of the pump itself were bad windings. And there might be a flat spot is what they call it on the armature. When it hits that flat spot, it can't get going again unless you reach in there and move it with your fingers. And you can move it off the flat spot and then it'll take off from there, but you're bound to have the same problem if it lands on that flat spot again. Another problem can be the capacitor on the pump has gone bad, which is what the little thing is inside this cup right here. The capacitor on an electric motor is almost like the starter on your car. What it does is it stores up uh, energy and then gives a big burst of energy right at the beginning when it sends voltage to the motor. And it turns the motor over, gets it going, and then, you know, your regular voltage takes over from there. So if your capacitor has gone bad, it doesn't have enough stored energy to turn the motor over and keep it spinning. A lot of times I'm able to just replace that capacitor and it's a pretty simple fix just by removing the screws on top, pull the cup off, remove the capacitor, plug a new one in, and you don't even have to drain the tub to do that. But since this one is under warranty still, we're just gonna replace the whole pump assembly. Send the pump back to Artesian and then put in a brand new one. And fill it back up and they'll be good to go. Got our new pump, I'm just gonna bolt it back on. Do everything backwards that we just did. I don't like to tighten down these bolts right off the get-go. I wait until I have all four at least threaded in there so that I can move the motor around while I'm trying to mount this up. Makes it a little easier. So remember what I said about um, remembering to put the o-ring back in. I'm going to do that right now, but what I'm going to do to make sure that my o-ring doesn't move around and get bumped and fall out again. So I've got a little bit of this super lube. Um, it's uh, grease basically. Synthetic grease. I'm gonna put a little bit on there, and that's gonna sort of act as a not an adhesive because it's not gonna dry up and be stuck on there, but it's a little bit sticky, so it's gonna help keep the O ring in place while I move the pump around and get that in place and tighten all the unions back up again. So there's the O-ring back on there. Just make sure your O-ring's back on here as well. Set the pump back in place.
So I got the thread started on the top union. Again, I'm not gonna tighten it all the way down because I wanna be able to maneuver this pump around so I can line it up for the other union. Come back, tighten everything back down again. So, you do have to be careful when you're tightening up these unions on the pump because right behind this shroud here are is the shell of the tub with couple of jets. And if you bump those the wrong way, they'll break a jet off on the other side, so be careful of that. Top one tightened down. Tighten down the other one. There we go, nice and snug. Control box. Now, if you get here and you're like, which one of those plugs did I unplug the pump number two from? I can't remember. If you look on the back of your cover plate here, there's a little diagram that shows you pump one is J23 AV so that's usually for your stereo is on J50 pump number two is over on this J17 slash 26 so if you look up here there's J50 is your AV the one right next to it is the J17 slash 26 so that's your pump number two there's only one way that you can plug these wires into, so you can't really mess that up. Just line up right in there. Okay, now that's plugged in. What I'm going to do differently from what the factory did, it was like I said, they put those three screws in the back to hold that plate down. I'm only going to put the screws in the front here to hold the plate down just to make things easier for future pump changes. So I'm just gonna use the same holes that they already had on there. Hold that down right there. Last but not least, you're gonna put your bonding cable back on. The ground nut there. flathead screwdriver to tighten it back down. gonna fill the hot tub back up again. I'll get the hose set up but the way I like to fill the hot tubs back up is we're gonna go in through the filter bucket. Going in through the filter bucket will help to 
keep your pumps from air locking, meaning when you fill up with water, there's a big air pocket inside the wet end. So as water flows through it, you'll have an air pocket right up here on the top of the pump. If you have that, then it's hard to get water moving and flowing. So to fix that issue, we usually run the hose into the filter bucket, fills up all the plumbing lines first before it fills up the tub. So we'll do that. All right, so we got our hot tub filled back up again. We got the pump in place. All the wires are hooked up. So we're gonna go turn the power back on. You can already hear the tub powering up. Wait for it to do its startup sequence. Prime. Wanna make sure it's moving water. We're all good there. Let's check pump two now. There we go as it takes off. We wanna double check our fittings just to make sure we don't have any leaking going on, no dripping. We're good to go there. Turn that off. Now we're gonna hit temperature up. It's gonna show the set temperature of 103. Gives you dashes just showing that it's testing the water and takes about two minutes to test. I have my amp clamp here on the heater and that just confirms that the heater turns on. Heater comes on, 24 amps, that's what we like to see. So now we can button everything back up again. Have it played on the control box. Got my handy dandy screws there to hold up the panel while I get it in place. I could like try and feel the difference here, get it right in the middle. Now you're not trying to struggle with hold the panel in place while you're putting your screws in. <coughs> Put our trim pieces on. I want to show you on the trim pieces. There is a top and a bottom to these. If you look at the space that's in between the hole and the top here, and you have the space between the hole and the bottom here, the shorter side is the bottom, whereas that longer side is the top. trim pieces in place, pull the screws off the bottom of the panel, put that in place.
it. That's how we replace the pump on the Artesian Hot Tub. Hey there, thanks so much for watching. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe down below to get future content from Leisure Time Inc. For your quality time.